The Coinsuris channel is pleased to have you back. Yes, it is real. In this piece, Stephen Nair presents a gloomy assessment of Ethereum's fate. Leaving aside the nation. My own assumptions underpin most of this. However, one thing is certain, Stephen played a pivotal role in the early stages of Ethereum. His reputation was impeccable. His tapes have likely been heard by everyone here. We must listen carefully to what he says, in my opinion. Things will start to make sense when he goes on, after all, Stephen's claims start to sound very reasonable, in contrast to Charles's and others' claims that it's hard to believe that Joe Lubin could bribe Hinman, Jay Clayton, and all these other government officials. Permit us to investigate this further. Joe bribing and officials are oversimplifying the situation, according to him. Public and private organizations were involved in a comprehensive system that revolved around corruption. This has received a great deal of attention. It is the government, not Joe Lubin, that is the beginning point. Right now, everything is in perfect harmony. The idea that Ethereum is allegedly influenced by the government is something that I've heard from a number of Bitcoin maxis. If Stephen were to intervene, I don't know what would motivate them. First things first, the Dow report free pass isn't the whole story, chasing Ripple is just one part of it. Nobody was able to dethrone Ripple, not even Ethereum or the government-backed banks. Consequently, the lawsuit and free pass for the Dow report were essential. In this day and age, this appears to be incredibly naive. With the circumstances surrounding the Ripple movement and time travel involved, it's hard to believe that well, they couldn't catch XRP, they couldn't catch what Ripple was doing, the cause of XRP and Ethereum sputtering. After three consecutive years of government abuse, yeah. I think Ethereum has done an excellent job in this area. That said, things weren't always so sunny. Stevens went into the why and the big picture, but the XRP token wasn't worth what it is now when compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Whenever the government attacks a protocol as decentralized, what does the XRP ledger imply? That it is controlled by a select few who look out for everyone's best interests. That is not cryptocurrency in its purest form. Important, proof of work. Who gave a hoot since the network is truly owned and controlled by the participants and miners? In what ways can Ethereum's miners influence the network? There was absolutely zero, they were all fired. The individuals responsible for the infrastructure were never truly in control, Vitalik promptly handed over the blockchain to them. Their plan all along was to back up a theory with proof of effort. The general public is less likely to join when the price increases since they are more likely to make a mistake and lose a significant amount of Ethereum. After that, as evidence of stake, it will be transferred to the present owner. This Cretan will be subject to their control. Despite the government and banks' claims that the protocol is public, decentralized, and permissionless, it really incorporates actors like Vitalik and Lubin who would act in accordance with their desires. It was also remarkably controlled and focused. Joe brought up the idea of Ethereum token clawbacks, I suppose we might need to do something similar down the road, but those are simply the most extreme examples. Allow me to explain this to you. We justify the government's actions by claiming, there must be a really dangerous person out there, and we must put an end to this. No, the government is really sensitive about minor matters. And if you give them that power, they won't think twice about using it. We shall have that someday with Ethereum. How do you feel about the idea that these coins are actually standing up for what's right? Seriously, if you're Cardano, it's XRP, if you're respectable, it's Polka Dots and that feature is absolutely necessary in the West and the United States. Even if I had to guess, I wouldn't call it most of them. It is crucial to be able to construct a first-order theory and utilize it to support their puppet in order to incorporate this. Your completion of Stephen's letter would be greatly appreciated. He says it again, fatality. Even while Hinman was talking, Lubin could not have imagined that their objective was decentralized. Additionally, I would like to inquire about whether the miners were consulted prior to our being sent to Ethereum. Were they worried that they wouldn't get enough votes at any point? Not in my opinion. Protocol, and they were free to move it whenever they pleased. 
Indeed, they were successful in doing that. They fired all of the ostensibly decentralized members after switching to a new network they had created and controlled themselves. Every single node and miner was let go. As the value of the token rises, you also make it harder for average people to utilize by introducing new constraints to the existing infrastructure. Also, they're exceedingly protective of this item, forever, everything must go via them. That is not haphazard. This was brought to our attention by Stephen Neary, who informed us that the SEC's treatment of all altcoins, save Ethereum, is purposeful. Unlike anything else we've heard, this is government-designed and has nothing to do with Joe Lubin bribing people. Share your thoughts and opinions with me by posting a comment below. Like and subscribe, please. Goodbye for now.